Welcome to your computer science class. So children, as you all know that very soon your half yearly exams will be starting. So let us have a quick glance to the syllabus for the exam. And today we'll be not uh, doing our regular lessons from the book. Today we'll be having our revision session. So let us move back to the topics. Let us see to the topics what we have to cover up. So here is the chapters for the half yearly examination. That is the syllabus for the half yearly examination. Lesson number one is evolution of computers. Lesson number two, software and its types. Lesson number three, Windows 7. Lesson four, more on Microsoft Word 2007. Lesson number five, working with styles and objects. Lesson number six, working with tables. So this is the syllabus for your half yearly examination and these are the chapters we'll be revising. Okay, in the videos to come. Today we'll be revising lesson number one and lesson number so let us move on to lesson number one children lesson number one is evolution of computers so evolution of computers before we start the chapter let us understand what is the meaning of computers i have already explained you that computer it is derived from the word compute which means calculation okay so evolution means what evolution means the development process in the technology of the computer is known as evolution so in this chapter let us see to the contents we have to cover up till now so history of computers then we have to study our bakers pascal adding machine Leibniz calculator we have to study about charles babbage then augusta ada lovelace then george Boole, then herman hollerick john von newman then howard aiken then we'll study about ENIAC and about UNIVAC 1 computer, which was the first general purpose computer. Then we'll study about the general uh, generations of computers. Then we'll study about the types of computers. So these are the topics for lesson number one, evolution of computers. So children, how evolution of computers means what? How computers came into existence. Okay. So children, the present day computers which we use today, it is, in, it is entirely different. That it is totally different from the devices which we used earlier. Now, how did we come to know that we use, uh, that we are in need of something with the help of which we can do calculation? So from that came the development of the computers and uh, we, came, we wanted to have a, something that could help us to perform the calculations. So earlier the calculations were done with the help of sticks and stones. So let us have a glance through the major milestones in the journey leading to the evolution of the present day computers which we use today. Okay, so first of all what came before us was a baker's. A Bakers is the first mechanical device. It is used for calculation and it was developed in China. It is made up of wooden frame with rods and each rod has a beads. Okay, it has beads. The frame is basically divided into two parts that is heaven and earth. The upper part is known as heaven. The lower part is known as the earth. I have labeled everything for you for proper understanding of you. Then each rod in the heaven has two beads and the earth has five beads. And it could perform addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So this was the function and the how the abacus actually looks. So this was all about abacus children and uh, the function of abacus. Then next comes Pascal adding machine. Pascal adding machine. It was developed by Blaise Pascal when he was just 19 years old. And he developed the Pascal adding machine which used gears, wheels and dials like you can see in the taxi meter and it performs the addition, subtraction. Okay, so Blaise uh, Pascal, he developed the Pascal adding machine. Then next comes the Leibniz calculator which was an improvement over the Pascal adding machine and it could do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and also find the square root also. And it was developed. Who developed Leibniz calculator? Leibniz calculator was developed by Leibniz in the year 1671. Then finally came Charles Babbage known as the father of computer, a British mathematician. Okay, now why he is known as the father of the computer? Because he invented the working model of the mechanical computer called the difference engine in the year 1822 and the analytical engine in the year 1833 within a difference of 10 years he developed difference engine and analytical engine 
okay then came lady agasta ada lovelace it is on revising your children lady agasta ada lovelace the first programmer who suggested the binary data storage that is 0 and 1 instead of the decimal number system decimal number system is all the number system that is the 10 5 6 4 3 2 except 0 and 1 all the numbers are decimal number system so this was all about lady agasta ada lovelace the first programmer okay then next came George Boole. George Boole is known for his contribution to the development of the Boolean logic. Okay. And with the help of the Boolean logic only, he started storing the result in, in the form of 1 and 0. That is 1 stands for positive answer and 0 for negative answer. Okay. So uh, it, we can also say that 1 is for on or high voltage and 0 is for off or no voltage. Okay. So, Boolean logic was developed by George Boole. Next came Herman Hollerith who developed the tabulating machine. Okay. And this tabulating machine was capable. It was able to read the data. It was able to process the data. Process means calculation and give the output also. So, the output was input was given through how? How could we give the input? Through the punch cards. Okay. So do remember children, I am again, again, again and again telling you the name of the inventors and the name of the machines and the year of the development. Like John von Neumann. John von Neumann, what, what did he do is that John von Neumann, he started the practice of storing data and instructions in binary code in the memory. And he was the one to start the use of memory to store data as well as programs. Okay, and he developed a DVAC machine in the year 1950 and in the year 1944, Howard Aiken. Okay, next is Howard Aiken. Mark I was developed. It is a sequence controlled calculator. Mark I developed by Howard Aiken. It was developed in the year 1944. What is Mark I? It is a sequence controlled calculator. Developed by Howard Aiken. Okay. Then finally, the first general purpose electronic digital computer was developed by John Mockley and J. Presper Eckert. ENIAC and UNIVAC, these are the first general purpose and the commercial electronic computer developed in the year 1951 by the joint contribution of John Mockley and J. Presper Eckert. Okay, the full form of ENIAC is electronic numeric integrator and calculator and UNIVAC is universal automatic computer. So these was these were the inventors who lay who played their uh, major role in the evolution of the computers okay next is the generations of computers here we'll study about how year by year the changes were made in the technologies of the computer so first of all you must remember the year of the development i've made the table for you and i've taught you the way to prepare the table so this way children you can prepare the table in your system and learn it table wise okay that how these uh, changes we came into the technologies like if i say what was the time period of uh, the third generation you must be able to answer that third generation computer uh, time period was 1964 to 71. What was the time period of fourth generation of computers? 1972 till present it is going on. And what is the time period of fifth generation of computers? It is the future generation. That is, it is yet to come. What is the time period of uh, first generation of computers? 1942-56. So this you must learn it by heart. Everyone must learn. Then the circuit used in each generation, like integrated circuits, it were used in third generation of computers. Microprocessors were used in fourth generation of computers. And artificial intelligence will be used in the fifth generation of computers. Okay, then what were used as input? For the uh, in the uh, first generation of computers, you must know that punch cards were used for input and output in the first generation of computers. Then magnetic tapes were used in as for storage in second generation of computers. 
Now, same with languages also, you must remember that which language was used in which generation of computers. Like, suppose the question may be asked that RDB, MS or C++ language was used in which generation of computers. It is the language of which generation of computers. So, you must be able to say that RDB, MS or C++ language is used in fourth generation of computers. Okay, then machine language and assembly language was used in which generation of computers? It was used in first generation of computers. So this must, you must by heart it yourself. Okay, learn it by heart. Okay, so that nothing is missed out from you. Okay, then suppose anything may be asked to you. Suppose uh, if I ask you IBM system or uh, uh, Apple one or Altair, is the example or are the computers of which generation of computer system so you should be able to answer that these are the computers of third generation okay so this was about the generation of computers children learn everything thoroughly anything may be asked to you you may be asked that which output devices were used in fourth generation of computers as uh, still we are in the fourth generation only. So you must be able to know that monitors and printers were used in the printers actually. Emphasize on printers, they were, they came into introduction in the fourth generation from 1972 onwards and still it is going on. Okay, so this was all about the generations of computers. So I hope you all must have understood the way to memorize it. Okay, prepare a table this way and learn it. You can make it on your copy also. You can make it in your system also. I have taught you the way to make the table also. Okay. Then next is types of computers, children. Types of computers means what? See, children, there are different types of computers. With re How do we differentiate the computers with respect to the size? Okay. Then speed. The speed is low or high. Then storage capacity. The cost of the computers. So based on these categories, we have classified the computers basically into four types. That is microcomputers, mini computers, mainframe computers and supercomputers. Okay, basically we have four types of computers. Micro, mini computer, mainframe computer and supercomputers. Microcomputer is further classified into desktop computer, laptop computers and handheld computers. Okay, so learn the use of microcomputers that where they are used microcomputers they are basically used in homes and offices okay learn the examples of microcomputers what are what are the examples of microcomputers like uh, commodore 64 ibm pc these are the examples of microcomputers desktop computers you can just like it you can keep it on the desk so it is known as a desktop computer okay laptop computers okay very simple it is handheld computers okay then mini computers mini computers what is the example of mini computer you must be able to answer example pdp8 is the example of mini computers okay so this was all about mini computers and microcomputers then next comes mainframe computers and supercomputers you must know the use where it is used mainframe computers Mainframe computers are very powerful computers, children, okay? So, it is mostly used in the air, airline and the railway ticket reservation, okay? It is also used in banks, universities and scientific laboratories. And then supercomputers, these are, this is the most powerful computer which is used for weather forecasting. You must know the example of all these computers, okay? Like suppose it may, it may be asked that Cray 2 is the example of which computer? IBM Z series is the exam, uh, example of which computer? So, these are the small 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 things you must remember learn uh, line by line everything thoroughly so this was from lesson number one children let us come to lesson number two that is software and its types so you must know that what is software basically okay software is what children software just as we human beings we have brain to think properly and according to our thoughts we perform our actions the same way children the computers also has software which is written in the form of program okay and the programs we cannot touch we cannot see to it okay the so what is the definition of software software is a set of program that helps the computer to function properly okay without the software do remember that the computer is not going to function properly 
Okay, now software is basically divided into two types that is system software and application software. System software is what children? System software is used to control the working of your system. Okay, how your system should be handled, that how the input should be sent to the system, how the file should be managed into the system, okay, how the output should be given by the system. These things, they are handled by the system software. That is the program which controls the taking of the input, performing the calculations. It is done by the system software. Now, system software, it is basically of two types. That is the operating system and the utility programs. Now, what is operating system? Operating system, it is used to operate the computer system. And operating system, it controls the overall activity of the computer system and it acts as a link between the user and the hardware. Okay. And it helps them to function properly, to work properly like the user and the computer, how they will interact with each other. That is done with the help of the operating system. Like I'm using the keyboard and I'm working on the system. So how the message will be conveyed to the computer that the user is ready for working. The computer should also be ready. This is done with the help of the operating system. Next is children, utility programs. What are utility programs? Utility programs, they are used for the smooth functioning of your system. They are like there should be no virus in your system. Okay, how the files will be managed. Okay, like you have cupboards in your house, how you arrange your clothes in the, the same way, how to arrange the files properly in the system on the drives. Like you have racks in your cupboard, the same way the computer also has racks so that you can arrange your files in a proper manner. Okay, then suppose if your a computer is accidentally having any damage, so you, it provides you the backup facility, like you have the pen drive, you have the CDs, so this facility is provided so that your computer, is, if it is damaged, you can store the data and information into your pen drive or the CD. So this is the function of the utility programs. The operating system also, it manages the taking the input, output, it manages the memory, that how much memory is there, how much has to be stored, what is the required amount of space in the um, uh, hard disk, okay. Then how to run the software, how to manage the working, the calculation, the how to manage the security, all these kind of things they are done by the operating system. Then what comes in the application software is children, word processing software, electronic spreadsheet software, database management system, desktop publishing software children and graphics, multimedia software. So whatever the actions we perform on the system, okay. That is known as application software. Okay. So what are the examples you must learn? That we have studied on Word. We have worked on Word. The work which we perform on the system that is done with the help of application software. Like painting you do. You play games on the system. You listen music on the system. This is done with the help of the application software. Okay. Like various designs you can make. Various uh, types of handwriting you can create on your own. So this is all done with the help of the application software. The examples I have displayed here, that is the word processing software, electronic spreadsheet software children, then database management system. Then when database management system is for what? When you have to handle a large amount of data, there we use the database management system. Then desktop publishing software, you must remember that where it is used, okay. Then the graphics, the multimedia and the presentation software we have all studied. So learn each and everything thoroughly children. So this was all about the revision from lesson number one and two. So I hope children you will prepare everything very thoroughly. Go through the textbook very thoroughly. Learn everything and I hope this revision will be helpful for you. So till then children stay fit and see you all in the next video.